All right. Are you ready to dive into the Word this morning? Amen. Well, here we go. We have been talking about things you may not know about the Holy Spirit. And we have talked about who the Holy Spirit is and what He does and what we are supposed to do in yielding to the Holy Spirit. Now, we're getting to the fun part of what the Holy Spirit does. Remember, Jesus said, I'm going to pray the Father that he sends the promise or he sends the helper, the one that comes along beside us, our counselor. And there's some things that he's going to do for us, and that's what I want to start to get in today. We're going to start talking about the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. This is fun. This is where we start to see the Word come alive in our lives. Okay. This is the application piece of the Word that is alive in the Word. It's from God. And we're going to start to see this manifest in our lives. Amen. Thank you. I promise the more you let me know how it's going, we'll get out of here quicker. We can slow this way down. There's two things that I want you to know over the next two weeks. Two things when we're talking about manifestations of the Holy Spirit. The first thing that I want you to know is that being born again or having a new spirit changes your nature. Having a new spirit, becoming one with God, being born again, whatever you want to call it, we'll talk about that, but a new spirit changes your nature and allows you to produce new fruit. I'm going to say that again because that's good preaching right there. A new spirit changes your nature and allows you to produce new fruit. And that's something that we can get excited about. This is what we are looking for as disciples of Jesus. We're looking for this new fruit. That's the first thing. The second thing, and I don't know if we'll have time to get into this today or maybe next Sunday is, is that when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit changes your abilities. By giving you gifts. Okay, they're two separate things. We have spent the last couple of weeks talking about the three different baptisms, and we need to know that there are different things that come from each baptism. Being born again changes your nature, which allows you to produce a new fruit, and being baptized in the Holy Spirit, when Jesus takes you and places you in the Holy Spirit, changes the abilities that you have because God has now given you some gifts. Amen. And this is where we start to see the application. This is where we start to see the Word of God come alive in our lives. I want to thank each and every one of you that has emailed, texted, and called in your questions about the topic that we are on. I appreciate those greatly. I enjoy answering those questions. But I want to let you know that these questions that are coming up, when we start to talk about the Holy Spirit, these are not from you. This, this is the Holy Spirit that is prompting you to ask questions. This is the Holy Spirit that is prompting you to ask questions. So keep the questions coming. I tell you, in, in our Connect group two weeks ago, I think we would have been there until midnight until somebody said, hey, we got to go back and get our kids. The questions are coming. The questions are good. Continue to ask questions. But as I was answering these questions this week, God reminded me of a piece of scripture that I wanted to go back and I wanted to touch on with you guys really, really quick when it comes to regarding uh, the Holy Spirit. So if you would turn with me to Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1, and that's where we're going to start this morning. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1, and the writer of Hebrews is very, very specific. He wants us to know a few things um, about doctrine, especially doctrine from God, and this is, what, this is where the Holy Spirit comes from. So therefore, 
Leaving the discussion of elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, verse 2, and of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. So if you've been going to this church for the last several years, you will have seen in your Bible, this is probably highlighted, this is a scripture that I've touched on several times, but there is a word in here in verse 1 that I want you to highlight. I want you to highlight the word Christ in verse 1. Therefore, leaving the discussion, discussion of elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Okay, why did I want you to highlight the word Christ? The reason I want you to highlight the word Christ is because it goes on to list some very, very elementary doctrines. And the writer of Hebrews is saying, look, as a brand new Christian in your walk, you should at least have these things under your belt. The foundation of repentance from dead works, faith towards God, the baptisms. See, as the church, we haven't done a real good job of laying and making these elementary principles of Christ our foundation. And that's evident because I've spent the last eight weeks talking about the Holy Spirit. And the writer of Hebrews is saying, bro, you shouldn't even be spending eight weeks on the Holy Spirit. You shouldn't be spending eight weeks on the baptism because that's something you should have known as a new Christian. And we should be way past that. But we're not. We're not, and that's okay. We're all in this together. I want you to highlight the word baptisms in verse 2. What we've been talking about the last three weeks is what the writer of Hebrews says is an elementary doctrine. What baptisms is he talking about? Baptism into Jesus. Baptism in water. And baptism in the Holy Spirit. I have heard other pastors in this community referring to churches that believe in some of these doctrines as cults. It shows me that they haven't read and understood what the writer of Hebrews is saying. Because remember I had you highlight that word Christ? These doctrines that are listed are of divinity. You want to know what the definition of a cult is? A cult is something or a group of people that take man-made doctrines and make a religion out of them. You know, a question that I have when I look at this scriptures is, why didn't the writer of Hebrews put Jesus right there? Because Jesus, in the context of this scripture, would have been incorrect. Because when we use the name of Jesus, we call on God on earth in his humanity is Jesus. And we look at the word of Christ, that describes his divinity. And divinity is where these elementary principles come from. So if anybody ever argues about anything that we just talked about, all you have to do is go turn to Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, and go, uh, I'm just a simple kind of guy. But the Word of God says that we should be learning this at the very beginning and going past these things. These are not man-made doctrines. Baptism in Jesus, baptism in water, baptiz baptism in the Holy Spirit. How simple can we make it? That's it. 
I don't know how to make it any simpler than that. Either the word of God is true or it isn't. So let's start to look at the manifestations that happens when we're born again and when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that leads us to point number one. When we are born again, when we say yes to Jesus, when we confess Jesus as Lord with our mouth, okay, we're going to repeat some here, we are what the scriptures describe as a new creation. We are a new creature. We are one with God. Our spirit is made perfect. Okay? Now, I've had some questions about this, so I want to clarify this. As a new Christian, you may be coming in here and you may be going, what in the world is being born again? I've heard, is, is this what I need to be? I've heard uh, terminology like holy child of God, uh, born from above, new birth, regenerated. I just want to clarify this. All of those mean the same thing. It means that you said yes to Jesus and you have made Jesus Lord of your life. In other words, when you yielded, to that, the Holy Spirit took you and baptized you into Jesus. And you can call it whatever you want. But that's what that means. The point of it is, is that when that happened, and we've got to get this down on side of, inside of us, or we'll never truly understand the gifts that are about to happen, you became something new. You became a new creature. Your nature has changed. And I think a lot of times as Christians, we forget about that. We forget that we are a new creature, a new cre I just made I just made a new word. I just made a new word. We are new creation. We are new. You're new. And that is something to be excited about. And that is something that we should never, ever, ever forget. You know, my job, or any pastor's job, would be much simpler if it, if our congregations grabbed a hold of that and just woke up every single morning and looked in the mirror and said, I am a new creation. My nature is changed. My fruit is different than what it used to be. Could you imagine how awesome it would be if we just grabbed a hold of that? Instead of saying some of the things that we say about ourselves on a daily basis, we're going to get to that in just a minute. But we have to understand we are new. We are new. We can now come to the interactive portion of our show. <laughs> I want you to repeat after me. My nature has changed. Because I am a new creation. Let's do it one more time. My nature has changed. Because I am a new creation. Now believe that and take it hold of that and put it deep inside and never believe anything else again. When we understand that, we can start to look at the manifestations of the Holy Spirit as it pertains to being born again. Let's start to look at some of those. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. And this is a good one right here. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. Again, these are elementary principles, but we have to understand them so that we can better understand the manifestations of the Holy Spirit working through us. Romans chapter 10, verse 4 says, For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness is to everyone who believes. So when you said yes to Jesus, you need to understand that you were made righteous. You are righteous. Repeat after me. I, I am, am righteous. righteous. The great thing about that and what the Holy Spirit has done for us is, is that we are no longer trying to become righteous. We can stop trying to become righteous. 
Why? Because you are righteous. The new birth, the regeneration, being a holy child, being born from above, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter, has made you righteous. And we need to stop defining righteousness as, you ready for this? We need to stop defining righteousness as not right doing. Righteousness is not right doing. In other words, you can't be gooder than your neighbor and expect to be righteous. We've got to stop trying that. It doesn't work. Righteousness is right standing with God. When the Holy Spirit takes you and baptizes you into Jesus, you are a new creation who is now made you in right standing with God. Isn't that good? So for some of us today, we can stop trying. Let's move on. Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Okay, we're going to move on from righteousness, and we're going to start to look at the new fruit that is being produced by the new creature, that is us, and we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about love for just a second, because the writers in Hebrews, the writers in Romans, Paul, he understood that one of the manifestations of this is love. Romans chapter 13, verse 9. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not commit murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet, and, there are, and if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. How many of you know sometimes it's hard to love your neighbor? But it shouldn't be. If you are truly born again, love is a manifestation that comes from that. And it should be easy to love our neighbor. We make it hard. We make it hard. 13.10. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfillment of the law. This is what Paul is trying to say right here. Look, Jesus came to fulfill the law. If you're going to work at anything, work at this. Work at loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor. That's all you got to do. We've made you, through saying yes to Jesus, we've made you righteous. The only thing that you need to work on now is loving God with everything you've got and loving your neighbor. If you'll do that, we'll take care of the rest. Well, what does that mean, fulfill the law? Well, we don't have time to get into that, but really quickly, if you look at the Ten Commandments, you can go back in the Old Testament and you can look at the Ten Commandments, and how many are there? There's ten. I'm fixing to teach y'all about the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, and we don't know how many commandments there are. (laughs) Thanks for making my job easy this next week. Okay, if you look at it, if you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, like Scripture tells us to do, you have now taken care of the first five commandments. Isn't that good? If you love your neighbor, like Scripture tells us, you've now taken care of the last five commandments. Pretty good, huh? Know your identity. Know that you're righteous. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor. Not hard, right? If it's hard, it's because you're making it hard. (coughs) 
Somebody's going right now. Uh, yeah, Pastor Joe. I was born again when I was 12. I know that. But I don't feel like I'm very loving. My coworker, who says he's born again, I know is not very loving. <laughs> and the neighbor across the street, who I see going to church every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, is the most non-loving person that I've ever met in my life. I don't get it. I say this carefully. But if that is truly your nature, you need to question yourself, really, are you born again? And if you're not, let's take care of that today. Let's take care of that next Sunday. Because I'm fixing to show you that if you truly and authentically make Jesus Lord of your life, you can't help but to love. Are you learning something with me today? You have a new nature. And because you have a new nature, you produce a new type of fruit. Let's start to talk about that fruit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. If you'll find that for me real quick. This is going to be a, a foundational scripture for us when it comes to this type of manifestation into the baptism of Jesus. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Let's go to 23. Gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. So go back there and highlight. Highlight the word fruit. Highlight the word spirit. When God's Spirit came into you, when you said yes to Jesus, you became a new creation, and the new fruit that you produce is what we just read in verse 22 and 23. If it is anything different, it's because you made it that way. This is now your identity. This is who you are. You are one with God. This is his spirit. Let's break this down. If you have an apple tree in your backyard, what fruit does that apple tree produce? We're, we're good. Okay, we're on something. What do oranges grow on? If you see an orange tree, what is on the orange? tree. <laughs> okay? And you guys are ready for seminary right now. Are you ever going to see an apple tree with oranges on it? Why? Because the nature of an apple tree is to produce apples. Your nature with your new spirit, is to produce love, joy, peace. Right? Am I reading this wrong? Here's a point I want to make with this. If it's clearly written in Scripture to us, when we talk about love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, good, good, goodness, faithfulness, if this is our nature, and this is now our fruit, could we conclude that we need to stop asking God for those things? How many prayers have you heard? Lord, give me peace. Lord, give me patience. Lord, give me love. I honestly believe this right now. If we could confuse God 
really, if we could confuse him, if he was able to be confused, this would probably confuse him whenever he hears prayers like, Lord, just give me the patience. I can just see God looking over to his right hand, looking at Jesus going, uh, I thought we already gave that to him. But yet, what do we do? We continue to ask for those things because we don't understand that our nature has changed, that we are one with God. Right? We have these things. All right. Let's get into some fun stuff. Turn with me. You don't even have to turn the page, probably. But jump back up to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. All right. We got to highlight some things. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies. And I'll let you read 21. Okay. Let's go back up there, and I want you to highlight the word works of the flesh. Works of the flesh. Anything that you see that was listed in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19, 20, and 21, any of things that you have seen in those scriptures, if you are doing those things, that is not your nature, and you are doing that by yourself. You are having to work at doing that because that is not your nature. The things back in 522 and 23, those just flow out of us naturally. It's easy for us to do that. That just comes naturally when we understand who we are and we accept our identity in Christ. But when it comes to these other things that are listed just right above there, which are adultery, fornication, any of that stuff, that's not you. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't be led down that path. That doesn't mean that you don't participate in those things. But I want you to understand this. If you do participate in those things, you have to work at it. Because the nature, our new nature does not produce sin. Right? Our new nature does not produce sin. You are not going to be walking down the street and theft comes upon you. You're not just going to walk down the street and go inside the store and rob it. Or any of, this, any of those things. No, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to think about it. You're going to have to plan it out. It's probably going to involve another person. You're going to have to get them in. You see what I'm saying? It takes this big old long process that we start thinking about, that we allow, that we produce to get to what is listed in, five, in chapter 5, verse 19, 20, and 21. We do that. We have to make ourselves do that. We highlighted works of the flesh. We have to work at it. Sin does not come easily for those that are born again. In other words, we have to work at it. I'm trying to say this as in many different ways possible. Let's go back to our example. Throw so back up there, uh, 522. Here's the fruit of the Spirit, the manifestations of the Spirit that are in you. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, those things. Those are you. Let's go back to our example of the apple tree. How many of you have ever gone and you've looked at an apple tree and you have seen an apple tree in your backyard going, ah, ah, ah. Lord, let me produce apples. Oh, in Jesus' name, let me produce apples. Come forth, apples. No. 
they just produce apples. Right? If they want to produce an orange, they've got to work really, really, really hard at it. I'm going to start to close here. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So what is one of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit when it comes to being born in Jesus? It's love. It's love. I'm going to close with these two scriptures. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Verse 8. He who does not love does not know God, for God is is love. Whose spirit is inside of you? God's. Your nature has changed. Your fruit has changed. I'm going to say this again. Anything out of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 that you do is on, your, is on you. You want to sin? Go ahead, but you're going to have to work at it. It's not going to come easy, and it's not going to come natural. Why? Because you are a new creation, and your fruit has changed. Here's going to be the last thing I'm going to say about this, and I would probably write this down. Oh, Pastor Joe, I just, I, I get it. I see in the scripture where you see that I'm a new creation and that I'm a new creation and, and now I'm in right standing with God and I take a hold of that as my new identity and I see in the scripture to where when I'm born into Jesus, I can't help but to love and I see what is written in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and all of those things that are listed there, they just sound wonderful and awesome and I really just wish that I could experience those things. I really just wish that I could feel that, but I don't feel that way. Well, guess what? Stop confessing what you feel and start confessing what the Word of God says about you. If you'll stand to your feet with me.